Hello everyone. <laughs> Welcome back. I've officially decided to name this. It's uh, called D&D and Q&A. Uh, that might change if I suddenly hate it, but we'll see. Um, today I'm joined by the lovely Lex, uh, who is a little- I'm a is cartoon it... right now. Are you a little goblin lady? Or is it like an orc lady? Is it just a vibe? Little goblin. Little goblin. Ears. I live for it. I love the little piercings. They're so freaking cute. <laughs> oh my god. Once I have money, I'm gonna pierce my ears like crazy because I just, I want all of them. <laughs> I, like, I have my helix done, just like a little gold hoop, and I love it. Ooh. And I always wanted to have like three in a row down my, I have pretty small ears, so I don't have that much space for things, My especially my lobes. Because I think oh, my I seconds, <laughs> my seconds got spaced really far away from my first one, so I couldn't fit a third, which kind of sucks. But I, I just remember, to yeah, <laughs> I, I remember just very specifically seeing this one video of Gabby Hanna with like she got three in a row and they got really infected, and I just went, well, oh. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna get them, like one at a time. And then I went to the piercers and they're like, oh, we could do all three. And I was like, no, I know how this fucking wrong. <laughs> and I got one. And honestly, I'm glad I did because that piercer was so bad. And I just, I went to like a professional piercer. Like it was like, like I was so confident because I was like, hey, look, I'm not getting my helix done at like a, we have, so like where you guys would say like, oh, like Claire's or whatever. There's like a, Claire's. in Australia, we have... <laughs> Uh, La Visa is like the like cheaper jewelry store okay, okay. so that's that's our yeah. version of saying like oh you got your ears pierced at La Visa when you were 16 like that's the energy <laughs> so we I wasn't doing that so I was so proud he used a body piercing needle on me so like the oh. needle usually used for like belly button or nip piercings the man oh, so used a he, hollow needle on he you. took a chunk out of oh. my hi fish hi Okay. <laughs> By the way, I would recommend having the chat up somewhere in case I miss questions yeah. and then you can ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just in case. He, that motherfucker took a chunk out of my ear, put in this really thick oh, ring because yeah. he was like, oh, we will give you like a bigger, like good quality one for like healing and then you can replace the jewelry later. And I was like, sure, I'm 18. I don't know things. Yeah. And then I remember I was finally like, it took like a year to heal. What they all do. Oh, yeah. Helix is a hard. But I think I was very lucky with how well it healed, considering it was like very like traumatized. I think I got a couple yeah. of bumps, but they went away after a little bit. So that was fine. But I went into this, like Essential Beauty is like this shop that I would say is like, it's a step up from La Visa, yeah, I would yeah. say. It's a little, like, they lie you down to do piercings. Like, it's a little different. But, wow. um, people have, like, some sort of cosmetology certificate if they work yeah, there. Yeah, it's yeah. a little something, but it's not, like, exactly. professional, professional. So I went in because I wanted to get the jewelry, and they said that they can take it out for you. So she did it, and she was like, what did he do to you? <laughs> what did he do what did to he you? Do to you? <laughs> he was like, next time you have to come here, okay? I went, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then she put it in but yeah it's like i have the little gold oh wait no it's not on this side jesus christ <gasps> wow the little gold thing and i was really i'm really bad at healing piercings because i'm impatient so this yeah. one is my second and this one like i can technically take it out but i was like give me something like semi-permanent so like you it you know you have to like use force to open it one of those ones yeah and with a little dangly and i paid quite a lot for them because they're really good quality and i was like because i just want to be able to just leave them in so that the mm. a they'll heal and b i just have to put in earrings and then like i've got everything going and that worked out well for me hell yeah you're doing <laughs> swell i'm so glad to hear it i am also doing well <laughs> It's a love great fish. day. We love you. Oh my god, a hollow needle on your ear like that? Yeah. I, I need to know what gauge hollow needle for, because like, 
the small hollow ones are fine, but holy cow. For, for the other person who could play like that, like, oh yeah. my god, they must have used it it hurt a lot but also i think it helped and this this happens to me in a lot of situations where like the person that i went to get pierced with i didn't know that well therefore i like i didn't want to like i i used the power of i don't want to be embarrassing to not feel the pain or react as badly <laughs> like yeah uh <laughs> It reminded me of, I am so bad with the heat, which is very ironic considering where I live. Oh my god. Like, for example, I I slept really well last night because it cooled down and also exhaustion. But the two days before, it's been like 42 degrees during the day, which, let me look up. 42 Fahrenheit. It's fucking hot, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> um... Dude, I can't handle the heat either, so I feel you. Like, 70 d degrees in American numbers? Uh, fucking... Yeah, <laughs> so it's been, like, 107 for the past, like, <laughs> two days. It's <laughs> summer. It's summer. <laughs> and horrid. Horrid. The good thing nope, is, no where I'm at, we have, like, dry heat, kind of like California versus, Aww. like, humidity, like in Florida. So we have dry heat, which means we get a lot of bushfires, but also dry heat's way easier to handle than fucking oh, humidity. Oh, no, absolutely. Humidity sucks. My dad was born in Senegal, Africa, and he talks about how the, the summer isn't so much better over there. Yeah. Because, like, he, he moved to Massachusetts, and then uh, everyone's like, oh, you must be loving this heat. He's like, no, it's sticky and disgusting. <laughs> the and heat you, back home is way better. You always feel, like, dirty, and I hate that. Yeah. Ugh. Instead, I just get really sunburned and there's bushfires. So, eh. Um, but. I can't and, relate to the burning, but I'm sorry. Yeah. So then at night, at like 1 a.m., it's 30 degrees, at which is 86. So imagine it's nighttime and it's 86. Horrible. Oh, the sun is not in the sky and it's 86 degrees. So for the, oh. the last two nights total in those 48 hours i slept for about five hours total it's so like four oh. hours one night and then like an hour the next night but yesterday i was weirdly fine i made it through the whole day i completed tasks i don't know what oh. happened but then it just overrides. last night i finally broke what i needed to do which i already knew this but the whole like if you're cold or cool if you get your head cold or cool it convinces the rest of your body that it is as, like if you're that's why you wear a beanie when it's cold because it convinces the rest of your body that you're warm so yep. i just slept on the opposite end of my bed and slept so the fan was directly blowing onto my face because i don't have an air <laughs> conditioning unit because yeah. i pay cheap rent in like a heritage site there's no air con <laughs> so i did Oof. that and i did sleep last night but when i was in vietnam last year it was about like 90 fahrenheit yeah. and 100 percent humidity and nope. what? i i remember i was really dreading it because i was like i really want to go but i'm terrified that the heat is going to ruin it for me and i'll be grumpy and i'm not going to have i'm not going like, to appreciate it enough it was a real fear because i was like genuinely worried i was going to be really mad at myself later being like if you weren't so fucking miserable the whole time, you might have actually had a good time. Like, But luckily, it was for a uni like trip exchange moment. So I was with so many people that I didn't know. Therefore, I didn't want to seem like a little bitch. So I just kept it together. And I was fine because I just wouldn't let myself get to the area where I complained a lot. Because I was like, you don't want to be cringe. And I was like, you're so right. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> We avoid cringes. Like exactly. Kind of. The power of a little bit of social anxiety. It, <laughs> it fixes so much. <laughs> you write fish. The, the overdrive, override. <laughs> yep. Oh my god. Iconic. Well, this, this little show, if um, y'all weren't aware, is uh, I just invite one of my D&D &D content creator friends over and we talk about D D and slash people ask us questions about D D if you have any uh opinions if you have genuine questions because you're a newbie 
They have opinions. Swing the D&D community we... always has opinions. And we have opinions. <laughs> we have so many. Feel free to ask All us these. questions. Otherwise, Lex also does art. You can, I can't ask, answer those questions. What even is an opinion? Well, an opinion... <laughs> An opinion is uh, what I have, and they are always right. True. I've never seen you be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> My best friend uh, embroidered a onto a bag for me for one of my birthdays. It just says, I'm sorry that I have big tits and a correct opinion on everything. Oh my god, say I love that bag <laughs> so much. Except she tried to take it away from me because I got a breast reduction, but I'm like, no. Aww, I still no, have big titties at heart. Please. The vibes are still there. Please. The vibes are still there. <laughs> oh my god. That's wild, wild. me too. I want one. <laughs> Listen. Right? <laughs> we can't be wrong. Oh yeah, like the pink ladies. Yeah, very that cool. Big titties and right opinions. <laughs> That's who we are. So, what have you been up to lately? Um, have you been doing any APs working on any projects? Uh, any of the recent projects I've been working on have been either the streams I'm a part of, uh, mm. Surf Effort Saturdays for my level twenty barbarian <gasps> uh, fighter, love her to pieces, big lady favorite character of all time no offense to my other character <laughs> listen <laughs> listen we have we favorite. all have favorites and we just don't tell them we keep it we oh, keep yeah, it hush. In that camp. keep it on the hush <gasps> you know, like when you have a favorite niece and nephew, <laughs> you mm. don't tell anybody but you can't, you can't have favorite kids favorite you oh yeah tell anybody. Rude. <laughs> absolutely yeah, that's my biggest one that i do every for the public uh, on Wednesdays, I'm on Phoenix Awak, which we're actually having our final episode tomorrow, <gasps> and I'm so nervous. Oh my, my first God. wizard character, it was wild. First first campaign I'm ever going to complete, because uh, I don't count like one shots or two shots. I expect that love before. that you have taste, because wizards are my favorite class, and they're the best <laughs> yeah. class. And I, some people, some people might say that I, me and my love for wizards is well known uh, to the point <laughs> that if I show up to a campaign with a wizard, everyone in there goes, for fuck's sake. And I'm like, yeah, no shit. <laughs> That's me with my barbarian. My I baby. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you stitched that, that you stitched that video of mine. <laughs> Dude, yep. it's so good. It's like, I have to. I have to do this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Listen. It's like, oh, God, here she is with another beat. Me lady. and druids. Real. Listen, I yeah, exactly. love Fish wizards. Love, love them so much. Yeah, that's really, that's so exciting, but also sad. But, like, at the same time, it's nice to, like, have something come to, like, an end in, like, a positive way. And yeah. that's so exciting. I think it's definitely more exciting for the other people in the group because they've been in it for years. Mm. I came in because somebody had to back out. So they were like, oh, hey, we want another person in the slot. Would you like to come in? And I was like, yeah, sure. Mm. So I think it's going to hit the people who've been doing this for years way more just because that's such a dedication, you know? I think I've been doing this for not even a full year. But oh, yeah. it's still going to be really nice to finally see a character have a, a real ending. Because the only other campaign I've had before that that technically ended was like only six episodes, and they told us ahead of time it was going to be a very short thing. And <laughs> my character's dad died, their cousin died, and sort of girlfriend died all in the finale. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> Were you playing a role? They all sacrificed. No, I was. Um, uh, I think she was just a fighter. Yeah, she. A, a, a plain, adorable little fighter. Uh, she was an Aladrin, fall Aladrin fighter. Oh, love, love and Aladrins. They're so pretty. Her name was Ginkgo, like Ginkgo Biloba Tree. I love. Because her mom was a Ginkgo Biloba Tree, so she was just named after her mom. And I then her dad that. was a dragon who adopted her. This was very like 2005. Like, oh, my dad was a dragon. You know. <laughs> I and love it was that. Very fun. 
I, but no, he freaking sacrificed himself with like half the party who one was a lizard who she called her cousin because her dad was a dragon so anybody reptile was like her family in her eyes and then another party member was like kind of flirty and said how like that she was so pretty and all that stuff and I was like so I was like possible girlfriend and then they all died <laughs> I was like well <laughs> damn <laughs> I think so it was the closest I've gotten to that energy was one shot that I did. This was off stream. This was when I was still learning how to Ooh. play, uh, where my character caused a TPK. Um, <gasps> it was fine. It was fine because it was a one shot. So like, no one no, was like especially funny. mad, but more so that like, if it wasn't a one shot, we probably would have been like, all right, let's 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 backtrack a tiny bit. I was playing a Tabaxi rogue who was a pyromaniac and was uh, had the same voice as and was based on that one pyrotechnics guy from uh, Atlantis. <laughs> They're like, paper clips, <gasps> oh nitroglycerin, God. you know, office supplies. <laughs> Very oh bad. God, I don't remember his name, I know exactly who I you're found talking. my boom. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> um, love oh, him. Legend icon. So, based off of him, he had a lot of bombs. And we're fighting a zombie beholder, and I was like, okay, I grab a bag of explosives and I throw it into his mouth. However, we were in an enclosed cavern. What? You actually fireball the entire crew? <laughs> I am mean to. I mean, in in my head, I was like, this is how we one shot him. But then the DM was like, well, since you're in a closed cabin, and like, if it was not like a one shot, you probably would have been like, the DM probably would have been like, by the way, just yeah. to remind you, you're in a closed cabin, and then I wouldn't have done it. But he just was like yeah. letting it fly, and then we just finished, and everyone was like, I don't care how. And I was like, bro, <laughs> they gave us statues, and we did what they asked us to. <laughs> <sighs> Love that guy. <laughs> I haven't oh, played him so since. Fun. I don't care how big uh. the room is, I cast fire me. <laughs> exactly. Though, for the last, like, I played a wizard who, like, who, in an actual campaign, who consistently cast fireball for the first time very recently. Because my other long-term campaign where I was playing a wizard, it was set in hell, so everyone had fire resistance. <laughs> so it was just, oh. like, it was a fucking useless spell to have. <laughs> um, but then I was playing as Scribes Wizard, so Fireball's great because you can change damage types, and that's just AoE. So like having that is clutch as hell yeah. to just be like Force Ball. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. However, I did lose hell. that character uh, like a week ago. He died. It was so sad. I'm um, sorry. He's okay. I. I make my like thing that I do is I'm not an artist in the way that like Finish, I feel like you're targeting me with these um aimables. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm not an artist in the way that like I'm not super good at actually like drawing figures and uh people and all of that kind of stuff. I'm very, very passable in that if if a gun was held to my head I could probably make <laughs> something uh but I never learned like good anatomy and all of that kind of stuff however Fucking I like hard. I like uh doodling and I like crafting <laughs> I like making shit so my good. my bit with my friends is making uh really absurdly uh over complicated props that it's yes. my most watched video on my account is still me just showing all of the props that I made for one of my campaigns. So when this character died, I was like, I'm gonna make them remember him. And I'm gonna make it their problem. <laughs> all you need to be yeah. as an artist is a will to create and stuff to divide to make something and I stand by that. Period. Period. Absolutely. Okay, I I'll say then I'm not I'm not, I'm not a not. character artist. But I love something, but I'm not great at it. That doesn't mean I don't sing, you know? You can like things and not be perfect at them. Period. And, uh, fuck AI bros. Fuck Sorry. AI bros. <laughs> I will say right probably finish. the thing that I do, because I think, like, um, the, like, ethics of art changes if it's, like, most of the time if I'm doing art, it's just for me 
to be able to see the thing and get it out of my head and be like, yes. And how I'll do that is find like a bunch of photos and a bunch of art and kind of like smash it together in a collage and then color it and be like, okay, this is for my brain. And then I go good and like no one else except for like my DM and maybe my home game party will see it because it's yeah. still not okay. <laughs> like it's not AI art, but it's still like me um, using uh, designs that other artists have made for clothing and that kind of stuff. So that's what I'll do just for me to be like, yes. And then I save up money and then I get it commissioned. <laughs> um, but that's what I do. Cause I think AI art, it's both like it's ill and I'm a screenwriter. So I get you in like a different way <laughs> that my job is also <laughs> getting taken over by AI. And we're both in that same situation where if you look at something written by AI or made by AI, you go, how the fuck did anyone think this was good? This looks like shit. No, seriously. I've seen draw, quote unquote, art by AI dude bros. They're freaking things that they've generated. And I'm like, bro, I'm sitting here worrying about my line art being perfect and they're fucking getting 50,000 likes on something with 10 extra fingers and like the eyes don't even match. Yeah. Like, what? Because <laughs> I think AI could be used to help art in like different ways. Like, you know, um, artists have been using, uh, like, tracing for, like, figures and, what's, what, poses forever. I stand by tracing for references f as being fine. Because every yeah. professional artist I know is like, hey, that helps with efficiency. And you exactly. need efficiency when it comes to the art world. Like, just so doing the... if you're bad the... at drawing hands, take a picture of your hand and draw it. Exactly. <laughs> just doing the, like, the dot stick, dot stick, just to get everything in position. And I imagine AI would be useful for like getting exact poses and being able to put that in and being like, okay, cool, that's what I wanted. And then using that to be able to just spit something out. Even then, there's softwares for that where you like just move around the pieces until you get really something. It could have been a really cool tool in one way or another, but of course the annoying dude bros had to get to it first before yeah. it would have been developed something as a tool. Hmm. And now it's just, teehee, I'm an artist because I typed in Bingle Borp three times and now I got this awesome picture. <laughs> and it's like, dude. And you can't copyright I, a pose. Very, very true. I hope you get a splinter. I hope you get a splinter in between your pinkies. <laughs> <laughs> Brutal. Yeah, I, I've used AI writing tools um, a couple of times, but the two that I use them for was for this Strahd campaign I do for a couple of with another couple <laughs> of creators which is offline we just do that for fun and yeah. I was playing a wizard Shakar um and I I kept saying like oh people would be like oh, this one character was like oh I really want to be a werewolf because of like really dumb reasons they were like playing like a really stupid barbarian and then I jokingly said oh my character is gonna write you an overly detailed essay of why you shouldn't become a werewolf and we just said that, but then I was like, oh my god, I can get AI to write this. So then I just put in, like, AI, can you write me a, like, really yeah. overly complicated, like, essay on why this person shouldn't be a werewolf. And then I included, like, can you do in-text referencing on, like, D&D &D scholars and stuff? So it added in-text re referencing from, like, Volo and Vordenkind. It was so funny. <laughs> but, like, that was See, just funny. for fun and for us, and it was silly and stupid. Yeah. And I like making AI do stupid shit, because I think it's really funny. Yeah, but, like, that, that's what it's good you. for. <laughs> it's a funny thing you could add for a quick bit with you and your friends. I'm like, that's whatever. It's the whole taking jobs and, like, yeah. just disrespecting the art forms that I have a problem with. Mm. Like, if you want to be making funny little bits with your friends, that's one thing. But if you're making money and taking jobs from someone who does this organically, then you're a yeah. shithead. And I don't like you. Yeah. And I hope your dog's not excited when you come home. Period. Because, <laughs> yeah, I think things like ChatGDP can be really useful for DMs. Like, you'll catch me going, like, give me ten tavern names with a beach theme. Bang. And you already do that with, like, name generators. But it's almost yeah. like you can give them a little bit more, like, extra tools to be able to spit stuff out. Sometimes I'll use it for, like, give me, like, a list of, like, NPC names and then I just keep them on hand. Like, that's, like quick things to use AI for that is yeah. just 
I, I, it should be a tool to make your job a little bit easier as all things have been like with instead of using calculators we now use like computers to be able to calculate sums really quickly because there's a lot of things that AI could absolutely be used for like um, making with like putting uh, sorry I'm words are hard like with processing really. numbers and commerce and that kind of thing like making people who do like financial works jobs easier where they don't have to like manually enter things like being able yeah. to get AI to do that would be great but there's also a really human part to finance that you can't take away from that where you need to add like human experience into like calculating people's like pay or looking at numbers and finding uh kind of correlations between what's been going on in people's lives and what's been going on in the world to like how that will reflect like those yeah. jobs are still needed but 100 percent like efficiency could be made better through ai like that's the kind of stuff it should be used for not well, creative I jobs like, it... we're supposed to take over the jobs that nobody wants or are too dangerous or not, like, not the creatives, not the jobs yeah. that we do for passion and love. Like, what? This is supposed exactly. to take the jobs that people don't want or the jobs that are too hard or unsafe. Exactly. Like, not Robots are supposed to take the bad stuff, not the yeah. good stuff, damn it. <laughs> that was the point. It's meant to make our, like, our lives easier. But I don't think, exactly. I think for some people, AI art makes lives easier but it also it's not very good at it is it but i feel like it would be good at Better putting at numbers death. in a row i feel like it would be great yeah. at that honestly the better it gets the more obvious it's going to be who it's stealing from because the more exact it's going to be able to get certain ways that a finger goes or how an eyelash is supposed to look that's just going to mean that it's copying better so yeah. i think the better it gets the easier it's going to be to be like no that's 100 percent a picture from insert artist here and then you just put them side by side and be like yeah no that literally that's just that they stole exact components from that picture mm -hmm. so i think that's what's going to happen especially with all like there's definitely going to be something go uh, when it comes to like legislation about yeah. it it's just sad a long game so yeah. long so it's like it's just going to take a while like i, I know think... uh Doja cat was fighting somebody taylor swift's fighting somebody mm -hmm. like there's already cases that are happening so they're going to put legislation on it and eventually it's going to be like hey dude bros you can't have it anymore it's yeah. going to be just companies and people who can afford getting sued mm -hmm. <laughs> i think it's going to be like it's it reminds me a little bit of it's going to be quite similar to um like like uh, olivia rodrigo and uh taylor swift with like songs sounding the same and it's going to be like, oh, they use this piece of AI art and then they show their art next to it. And then it might be like in a court, they decide like uh, the percentage of similarity they have to have or yeah. the amount of similarities they have to have before it is considered still their art. Like the idea that a piece is like copyrighted and that it probably won't be that like you can't use AI generated art. It's probably going to be like similar to songs that it has to be a certain amount completely different from the original and then i think yeah. ai will just get better at making them different and but hey. it's still it's bad but, mm, yeah. like they're still working on protecting kids on the internet with uh oh like parent god. channels I, and I'm that kind of stuff it for tape, yeah but, oh my god the stories i've heard of poor kids actual yeah. young people uh yeah, see, that would be great. AI for detecting fucking cancer and stuff? That's what we want That's it for. That's what we want not it for. Not for making art. We want it for good shit. For real stuff. Exactly. Like, not for, for dude bros who want to draw Goku freaking mm -hmm. doing weird stuff. Like, Goku and <laughs> pick Sonic. Pick up a pencil. Yeah, it's... What Goku it... and Sonic have a baby. Yeah. <laughs> this is... Sorry, this is the best way I sh should have put it before. It's... um, It should be doing the stuff that, like, the cl what computers have always done being able to do stuff like um very like to do with numbers most of the time that where you have to look through the largest amount of information extremely quickly without worrying about like tiring someone out or human error in that kind of aspect like when you're uh 
like I'm just thinking of like the imitation game where like the computer was able to look through like thousands of different possible codes to see which would be the right one where humans could only do so many in a day yeah that's kind of like very similar in the way with medicine where they can like uh AI can look at a bajillion uploaded like x-rays or whatever it is of a particular cancer and can look through every single one of them all at once and compare it to this and like immediately spit out an answer and it would still have to be compared to like a human looking at it but you can imagine how long that would have taken a human to do thus maybe making the cancer worse meanwhile a computer can do it in like two seconds that's what it should be used for like, I don't hate AI, because there's plenty of things that AI has been great for when it comes to things like video editing or something, where it's like, mm. hey, I'm using this AI program to detect the background to get rid of it for me. Absolutely. Like, or the like background that, noise. So oh, yeah, exactly. Like, AI, I am so fine with things like that when it comes to making the job you're already doing on your own easier, more efficient. That's the point. I yeah. think efficiency was the point, not generation. Yes. There, yeah. Because like, I think to generate a product, you want to make it easier for us to make the product. Like when we say like, oh, it's designed to make people's jobs easier, they would just say like, yeah, we're making it easier because we're making something quickly and we don't need to hire someone. It's easier for us. And I'm like, no, no, no. Like for example, <laughs> another thing that I could think of, if you're putting it in the creative field, could be like, uh, in animation, maybe AI can be used for like cleanup to make things like run smoother. Exactly. So like you're still animating the entire thing but then uh the kind of like getting from like one tiny frame to the other tiny frame and smoothing it all out and that already exists as like a thing but that's still ai um but it's not and to be fair cleanup artists is a job and it's it exists but it would be like kind of that final step to like smooth everything over and that's Like, there's still artists spending a lot of time and putting love into that, but a job is made so much easier because of it. I've also a bachelor's in applied mathematics and did some research into mathematical modeling modeling with AI. The theory and things have so much potential for good. Imagine every student being able to access free tutoring. That is very true. Yeah. Everything I've heard about AI that isn't generative AI has been phenomenal. Like... (laughs) Again, things with cancer, de- like developing things for um, benefiting, you know, people who have cancer, or like you said, free access to for education. Like those things are all great. Everything I've heard with generative AI has been annoying. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's like two sides of sadly the same coin, and it's just I hear so many good things that can be so great, and I the results are phenomenal. Hearing the pro- the progress we're gonna progress, yeah, English. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hearing the progress that we can make with a lot of this stuff would be phenomenal and then you have people who are awful and making blank about people and young people that instead of you know helping society in one way or another and like all of that stuff about like social se- like security and identity and we won't get into it but that's scary hate that absolutely Ugh. Yeah, unfortunately, it is always the case where, like, as technology improves, it gets both harder and easier to be a criminal. <laughs> but oh, yeah. We're I'm just wondering gonna... if video evidence can be yeah. a thing in court cases anymore, where they're just mm. like, oh, no, that's AI. I wasn't even there that day. <laughs> yeah. But I imagine that hopefully they'll be able to, like, create almost, like, tools to, like, be able to scan a video and look into it's like i don't fucking know how things work i'm not a woman in stem look into it's like coding or something (laughs) and maybe be able to like detect whether it's created through ai or like break it down to it's like like maybe they create ai to scan if something has been created through ai that would be a great tool for ai the funny thing is deviant art had something like that in a way like whenever i would upload a photo that i took it was like oh it was used with this camera this aperture this lens yeah. well like it had all that information there so i feel like we already had the technology mm. to be able to like oh hey if that's like the direct file we can see exactly where it was so we can see like oh 
it did come from camera 37 at the target parking lot metadata see fish is a paper. fish fish news stem i don't know oh yeah <laughs> this fish is curing cancer i'm not not even kidding they're they're literally like uh, that's um, awesome i don't remember the exact word fish if you don't mind typing in the exact word of your job if you're okay with that but literally like when i see when we like body double while fish is at work they're literally working with chemicals of cancer and like oh my cancer my kidney cancer cells died i gotta go get new ones and i'm like what <laughs> what are you talking about <laughs> meanwhile we're like la, 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 la. <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> fish be saving lives over here <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, period i'm a drug, drug development, development. That's a lot of words for Elmo. That's very cool. <laughs> That's awesome, Fish. You are genuinely doing God's work. <laughs> Fish is phenomenal. Love them to pieces. Fish, I think we're, but, yeah. we're, we're staying together for Gen Con. We're going to be in a house. <laughs> Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. But, yeah. I'm so excited for Gen Con. I'm freaking out about Gen Con. I... I'm excited. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to America. I'm getting on a plane. I'm going to be there. Oh my god. Like a twenty-five-hour flight. Yep. <laughs> oh, I'm... oh then good luck. Afterwards, I'm doing New York, which is horrifying Ooh. to me solely because, and it's just because this is when Gen Con is. But for me, because you know, I've always I have the tourist perspective of New York City. Um, going there in the summer feels so wrong to me, because New York, <laughs> in my mind, it's Christmas movies, it's snow. New York is winter. <laughs> Going there God, in the dead of summer where it's going to be humid. Blech. Humid people walking around all the time. Yep. Blech. But then I remember yeah. someone was like, are you going <laughs> to... It was two things where people were like, are you going to be okay in the heat? And I was like, oh, I've done Vietnam at fucking 35, 100% humidity. And they're like, okay, you'll be fine. And then I think it was... Might have been Diana, I think it was someone else. Uh, just being like... Oh, and like, what cons have you been to in the past? And I was like, I've been to local cons, and they're like, well, like, just so you know, Gen Con's huge, and it sometimes can be like really overwhelming. Like, there's so many people there. Just like, prepare yourself. And I was like, that's fair. I will say, I'm a violent extrovert. And also, <laughs> I went to Kolkata for two weeks. I can fucking do anything. <laughs> I, <laughs> I have been to you. Kolkata, India. I've seen but. I've seen a group of people. <laughs> all right, I've seen some people in a confined. I went in a night train to Varanasi. I'll be just you fine. <laughs> As someone whose family is from India, mood. I'll be looking around Gen Con being like, "Oh, this is." Oh my god! Definitely stick with your crew. Kate when I yeah. first Gen Con, it was like two years ago. Was my first Gen. Con. I stuck with my crew like glue. Like I was like, this is my first big con. This is my first con in a while because obviously COVID and everything. So I was like, okay, first time being at a huge convention. First time being at a convention long because I was doing very small. You know, like I went to Anime Boston, mm -hmm. very, very small in comparison. So I was like sticking to my people like glue. I did not leave their side. I was like, yeah. nope, wherever you guys are going, I'm going with you. I don't trust none of this. <laughs> That's what I've told all of my friends that I'm like, guys, I need you guys to understand that I'm in a foreign country. I'm going to be attached to you like a fucking koala. I'm just going to be. <laughs> like, don't no, get I it twisted. Get it. I feel you. I'm so this excited. This past was pretty much no different. I was still attached to my crew. Like, when I'd see other people, I'd always be like, oh my god, hey, hi, how are you? Oh my god, I love you. And then, like, once my crew was leaving, we're like, okay, cool. I can't lose them. Sorry, we, we're all <laughs> staying together <laughs> in the apartment. Bye. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I'm. Oh, I'm so freaking excited. So far, every gen I've gone to has been a really negative incident. So I'm. Like, I definitely stay with the crew. Yeah, I've. I've stay heard with your some... peeps that you trust. One thousand. Yeah, I'm. I think I'm gonna be. I feel like I'm gonna be fine. Just cause like. With the way I am as a human being, I <laughs> deal with things very well and very quickly because I'm extremely, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Confrontational. And 
Protected. I get that too. You've got Ivy. This is very true. Every t- fish, I need to understand. Every time I'm like, oh, I'm staying with Ivy, everyone goes, you'll be fine. <laughs> yep. Because I will be. She is the queen of Genicon, and I'm so happy that I'm going to be staying with her. I think like, the her. main reason that awful people are not like around us. <laughs> Anytime yeah. it's found out that someone is awful in one way or another, Ivy's like, oh, bet. <laughs> and, like, and then she'll they disappear always like they black bag. And she'll mm-hmm. she like she'll always know because everyone will tell her. She she has oh, the absolutely. list. Absolutely. Yeah, it's very Ivy's bad. people plug. Oh you yeah. You know what guy? You go to Ivy. <laughs> <laughs> she is that one trend where it's like, uh, me wa- walking at night, my scary dog. She is the scary dog. <laughs> absolutely. Um, yeah, I'm really lucky. I've got lots of friends going. Not because I think. They're all staying together, and then I'm staying with Ivy and Fish and two other people, I think. Um, so they're all staying together, and then I'm with... Because I, they're, they're all the fucking Americans. They were like, oh, we'll figure this yeah. out in, like, February. And I was... It was, like, September of last year, and I was like, well, I've booked my flights because this is an international trip, and I want to know my accommodation now. <laughs> so, yeah. I, so I figured it out. And... But yeah, I think they're going to be really close by, so yeah, fish. The Gen Con's wild, though. Catch me people... sneaking off. <laughs> Catch me sneaking off. <laughs> I'll sneak off in the middle of the night and go cook them dinner. <laughs> Do it. But no, Gen Con's wild because people were straight up buying out the hotels, like, the day after Gen Con ended last year. So it's like, mm. it's absolutely ridiculous how big this is and how serious It's going are. to be so big this year, especially. I feel like the creator space and also like fans of D&D in general has like doubled if not tripled I feel like Gen Con is going to be huge this year like they're gonna break some records this year yeah especially with the COVID restrictions and everything they've Mm. only been getting bigger which personally I'm like I'm double masking like because every single convention like so many people have gotten COVID right after and I thankfully knock on anything so I'm just yeah, like, I'm like, I don't want to get COVID bad. Yeah, I was talking to some people and like some people say, yeah, I must. Some people say they don't. So I think I'm just going to like bring it with me and maybe like wear it when I'm in crowds. And then when I'm just with people, I'll take it off and that kind of thing. I, I'm going to bring plenty with me and we'll probably just like vibe it out when, when I'm there. But I don't want to, I don't want to get crowd. I personally was like, if you see too many people around you, just put it up. And then if a bunch of people leave and you have, like, enough open air, then, yeah, like, you can take it off for a bit. Because that's what I would do. It's like, okay, if we're outside, I don't need to wear a mask. I'm outside. And we're not, like, neck to neck, shoulder to shoulder with people. But once I'm inside that building and everyone is elbowing each other just to get to another room, I'm like, nope. I am getting too many people skin cells on me right now. I need to mask up right now. Mm. And he's been- yeah, I did hear about that random. Apparently, the Airbnb illegal thing in New York City was very recently reinstated, as in, like, you can now get Airbnbs in New York City again. But oh. I don't know. I've just heard so many horror stories of people, like, showing up to London and the Airbnb yeah. was, like, a scam. So I'm terrified. Luckily, I'm no longer going alone. I'm going with a friend, which is good. Because if I was going alone, right. it would have been so much more expensive for me solely because I would have wanted to be, like, in, like, some sort of hotel by myself where there is, like, a concierge or something just, like, for, like, safety reasons. Which yeah. would have, like, doubled the price of whatever the fuck I was looking for. But if I have, like, one other person with me, I can be, like, a, a little less uh, super duper conscious. But at the same time, look, if you go into New York, you'll know you're dropping, like, a like a couple of couple of thousand on uh, accommodation <laughs> and that is just a part of it i'm gonna be there for just under two weeks so okay. but comparing my like accommodation to the indianapolis to new york is gonna be so depressing oof big oof very no, that gen con's the one convention that i want to go to every year like if i can go to one gen con definitely you could so many of my friends are going to it at so that's the one i always try to make sure i have a little bit of cash aside for it's like hey 
y'all want to commission me to draw stuff so I can go to <laughs> so I can go to please, Gen Con. Please, <laughs> bury please. that. Yeah, my my job is wonderful. I love it. I work at a bookstore. Ooh. Uh, shock horror. Uh, you don't you don't get paid a huge amount at a bookstore because it's a what? bookstore. No way. So <laughs> I've just been like since kind of that like September I've been like s gently saving like the whole way through because uh I've I've bought the plane tickets which is the most expensive part so that's happened yeah and I've bought my Gen Con tickets so those things have occurred. I have the money for accommodation, but I haven't paid for it yet, obviously, but it's just kind of uh, scary, bro. I'm so excited, <laughs> no, though. I'm going to bring so many Australian snacks and give them to everyone. Oh my god, hype. <laughs> <laughs> what's, like a norm what's like a normal flavor that you see for everything in Australia? Um, we have a lot of, like, and this is for, like, chips and that kind of, uh, yeah, chips. Uh, they're, like, we love, like, chicken-flavored things, um, oh, okay. is a big thing. Like, when you guys have, like, chips, like, salt and vinegar chips, do you guys have, like, chicken flavor ever? I think that's, like, a very Australian thing. Uh, it's definitely more of a rare flavor, I think, yeah. on my end, to see flavored stuff. Like, it's there, we can definitely find it, but it's, yeah. like, it definitely is one of those, like, funky limited edition flavors or like a seasonal flavor versus mm. something sealed chicken flavored everything in regards to like savory snacks is very popular my favorite chips on this planet earth is a brand called red rock deli which is kind of like the artisanal chip like it's more expensive than the other mm -hmm. ones and it's real fancy <laughs> um it, they have like a honey soy chicken flavor so it's kind of like a That's sweet almost like teriyaki flavor it is so fucking good some people, I that sounds some a small group of people hate it, and the and then other people like obsessed with it. Like there's no in between. It's one of those. <laughs> oh god. Gotcha. Yeah. That and then, in terms of our like lollies and chocolate and candy, is um very similar to like British stuff. We have a lot of what okay. they have. Pretty similar. Our, yeah. Our, your chocolate can't be deemed legally as chocolate in our country. <laughs> yeah, I've heard horrendous things about American chocolate. I'm Hershey's? trying to be Canadian, so I'm, I'm trying to like get away from the Americans. Fair uh, enough, <laughs> as you should. Hey, look, the first time I tried Commonwealth Kit buddies, here. look at us. <laughs> <laughs> no, straight up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Well, like the first time I tried a Kit Kat up here, I was like, why does this taste so decadent? Like, what is this? And he's like, what? my boyfriend's like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, no, this tastes like way better than an American Kit Kat bar. This is ridiculous. Yeah. They're often richer in, like, you, yours. Y'all's is very waxy. Like, it's not as flavorful. And yeah, it's it's, just it's called chocolate flavored <laughs> candy over here. Oh my god, that's so funny. It's like, it's not chocolate. It's no. chocolate flavored. <laughs> yeah. That's so It might funny. be that, like, it doesn't have enough, like, real milk in it or something. I don't know. But, and we, I would we also, a lot of our chocolate is fair trade, which I really enjoy. Because okay. there was a big overhaul of that a couple of years ago. So that's good. But I'm gonna, there's this one chocolate brand, which... Is in other states, but it's from my state. Um, it's uh, this kind of... I feel like luxury chocolate isn't the right word, but it's kind of that. It's like family-owned yeah, business you... since the 1800s. They have stores, and it's kind of like... If you need to get your boss a Christmas present, you get him a bag of Hague's chocolates with a bottle of wine. Like, that's the vibe. Oh. You know? Okay, okay, okay. So, you. Hague's... Literally, I'm bringing some. It is the really best. Has... It is the best chocolate you'll ever eat in your entire life. It's very rich, but not too rich. It's not like right. overwhelming, but it's yeah, fair trade, have, like, locally made. Decent. They own their own cocoa farms and pay their workers very well. And I'm like, you know what? Kudos. <laughs> Australia has yes. states. Random. Read a book. Okay. <laughs> 
Get we, educated. We have states and territories. So we have our states and then our capital cities. So Sydney is the capital city of um, New South Wales. Which is... God damn it. What's, fucking what's colonization. Australia question. What is up with this half hour daylight savings I'm seeing it's in like the fucked. middle section of Australia? It's fucked. <laughs> So I'm in there. So right now it's, yeah, it's always like an extra half an hour while you guys are like an even three hours. It's just the wet, where our country is. It, it landed in a weird spot. So our whole country where you guys are like three hours, we're an hour and a half across. Actually, no, it's two hours. Anyways, like Perth is in Western Australia Fun fact, Perth is the most isolated capital city from any other capital city on the planet. She's in a oh. corner. Um, is an hour and a half time difference for us. But yeah, Adelaide's in a really weird spot. I'm That half hour is wild. Yeah. If you know, like, the bite, like, the bottom part of Australia that does a little curvy. Called the bite? It's called the Great Australian <laughs> Bite. Because it looks like I someone's taking a bite out of it. Um, I love that. We're kind of, if you, at like the center of the bite and then a little bit to the side, that's where Adelaide is. So I'm in, my state uh. is called South Australia. So every time people are like, I'm from the South, I go, I'm from the South too. <laughs> South <laughs> Australia. We're <Southern> together. <laughs> we Southern bales up in this bitch. <laughs> and the funny thing is, is that South Australia and Adelaide, y'all know about the convicts and all of that. Uh, Adelaide was, South Australia was the one state that didn't have any convicts, so it was only for free settlers, is what they called them, the people who invaded. Uh, <laughs> First Nations land. Uh, anyways. Um, <laughs> uh, and because of that, we're considered the like posh people, because we have, what? our accents are far more like the English accent. The Australian accent uh, was derived from the Cockney accent because they were all convicts, so they were all poor people. Uh, came from that. So our accent, where in like Sydney they might say dance, we say dance. Uh, okay, so okay, like okay. I say, I'm from the South, but we're the posh. Yep. <laughs> we're the poshy people. We're not like rich well, or I... anything. We just have posh accents. We don't got money. We just got the attitude. <laughs> Period. <laughs> but that's why it's easy for me yeah, to do I British accents. Days from well, not like that exact area, but like the one where they have the more posh. Posh. Brooklyn Tuesday. I don't know if you're aware of them. They Which one? Creator, Australian uh, D and D creator Brooklyn Tuesday. I don't Tuesday. think I am. We, all of the Australian d, d content creators, we just, like, we need to know each other and we just don't. <laughs> it's really bad. Well, if you want to check them out, pretty chill person. Uh, they do a lot of D&D based stuff. I think my my good friend Arlo, Arlen Trick, he is Australian. We're going to New York together. <laughs> oh, nice. He's a little star and an icon and I love him. He like randomly, <laughs> like a month ago, went super fucking viral and has been doing incredibly. And I was just like, Aww. that came out of nowhere. Congrats, King. Good for you. Good for Back you. Him. He's doing great. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I split up into little sections, but then we have random territories just to keep it complicated and make it make no sense. <laughs> just to make it annoying. Yeah. Hey Lex, do you know what the do you know what the capital city of Australia is? Of like the entirety of Australia? Yeah. What's our uh, Washington? I would guess Sydney, but that's just because that's the one city I, know. I really know. It's it's like it's very similar to like Canada in that way that like you can imagine if you asked anyone, oh, what's Canada's capital city? They'd be like, oh, Toronto, and you're like, no, it's not, like, nah. Lisa. Yeah, it's not. It's <laughs> fucking Canberra. <laughs> Cam I've never even heard of Canberra. <laughs> well, Americans always pronounce it Canberra, and we're like, no, it's Canberra. Canberra. <laughs> um, or how Americans sometimes say Melbourne. 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 <laughs> Melbourne. I was like, just Melbourne. say it like B I N. Melbourne. Mel Melbourne. Melbourne. Yeah. 
Yeah, Canberra's our capital city. Um, Do you have a New Brunswick? Is that you guys? Maybe? In, wait, isn't that... Isn't that New York? Whoops. <laughs> Listen, I'm American, I'm sorry. Listen, oh no, that's Canada. <laughs> Whoops. I'm hey, look, my, we're my both there. <laughs> we have... <laughs> Someone else has a brain cell, it's not me. Our, like, capital cities are... Um... Oh, wait. Queensland is a state. Jesus Christ. Um... <laughs> Darwin, Cairns, oh wait, Darwin, Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne, Perth, Adelaide, Hobart. About that. Really? So you've, most <laughs> people know Sydney and Melbourne. <laughs> gotcha. I've heard of Adelaide uh, be mentioned. I've heard of Yay. obviously Sydney because finding Nemo. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. P. Sherman 42 Wallaby Wasted. That place doesn't exist and it's so depressing. I feel like they should make no! it. They should have named a street. Wallaby Way does not exist. It's very depressing. Listen, for the children, you need to put a fake sign somewhere. Yeah, we It doesn't gotta. have to be a legit sign. It doesn't need to be on, like, the yeses or anything. Just make a fake did sign you know, for the kiddos. Did you know in Australia? <laughs> so we have our, um, like, Home Depot. We have two. Mm -hmm. And it's called Mitre 10, and one of them's called uh, Bunnings. And Bunnings, Bunnings is so a uh, hammer barn from Bluey is a parody of oh. Bunnings. So they use the same colors, and it's like meant to be like a if you called it Bone Beepo, like that's hammer ah. barn. Um, and funny. for like a month, a bunch of Bunnings all around Australia put up signs and changed it to Hammerbarn and they all had uniforms oh. for Hammerbarn and it was so cute. See, where's the P Sherman 42 I'll be Sydney sign? Y'all could do it. We can do it. With <laughs> Just put it in front shown. of the opera house. Exactly. Uh... Kids probably think that's where it is. <laughs> oh yeah, I was going to show this. Oh my god. So this was, this is one of the props that I made for the <gasps> dead character. And it's, it's his spell book. It's shy. Side Let's see if I can show you a page that is good. Yeah, so like. <gasps> oh. And yeah. Oh, I'm obsessed. I just made his spell book with all of his spells. Oh my god! Please sell that. Please print some. Keep the original <laughs> and sell it. I Please, feel like I can't because I kind of like a lot of the mm, oh, I did change them to be fair it was kind of like for all of the um kind of sigils I just made like a Pinterest board of a bunch and I just kind of grabbed elements from all of them but it was can I see that counterspell page one more time? yeah sure Fish was asking. thank you that one's my what favorite do you see, Fish? I will say this for Scorching Ray, I like burnt the paper because it's Scorching Ray. Anyways. Ooh, um, smart. Eesh. Counterspell. Sorry, it's backwards. Oh, it looks so cool. Okay. Do you see what you were looking for, Fish? Howdy! Howdy. Hey, Fenrir. How are you? Oh, Good God. Tomorrow. And then I also have, like, letters to make them cry and i wrote Aww. a dissertation defending magic that they can read the kind of fell ah, face look stylist Who. girlfriend and i got all excited that's fair <laughs> that's cool just vibing off to work well welcome to our lovely little hangout where if you have any dd questions feel free to send them our way otherwise we're just gonna keep talking about random shit because it's Fun. <laughs> just be chatting. We're letting the ADHD take you wherever. <laughs> exactly. That's how it should be. I've had like seven different topics. So Y'all are fun to work. listen to. Oh, God, a blushy. <laughs> <laughs> You're wrapping up work right now. Listening to us at work? Fair, honestly. I get it. But somebody disorganized all the trash bins at Fish's job and it's disheartening. <laughs> Imagine having it for like 
ever, your trash bins all be in the same spot, and then somebody moved them. I'd be so mad. That sucks. <laughs> do you, any of you wish Critical Role? Yes, I, I do. I tried to speed run it, and I haven't finished any of them. <laughs> I am almost finished campaign two, and I'm like, have been up to date with uh, campaign three, except the most recent uh, episode session I haven't yeah. finished yet. So I'm still watching that. But yeah, I I I watch I watched the critical roles. The chairs too. And they, the chairs. They moved the fish. I wanna I just, I need you to know that everything's gonna be okay if even if it seems dark in this moment. <laughs> and that you're doing amazing, okay. sweetie, and I'm so proud of you. You're gonna watch the Dagger Heart one shot tonight. I've been exploring it today. Seems like a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm hoping they'll like post it later because I do want to check it out because I'd be interested to see. It's Dagger Heart's the new TTRPG that Critical Role made and uh, oh, releasing the playtesting for to for for today. Yeah, I'd be I'd be keen to watch it and maybe like see if it would be something. Yeah, I mean if like people were gonna do like a AP one shot to give it a go. Fucking, I'd join. That sounds fun. I love trying out new TTRPGs. As long as someone who knows what, like, at least knows a little bit about it can explain it to me, because I know everyone can learn in every every way, but for me, I just need to hear it explained to me or visually watch it for mm. me to, like, learn it properly in my, like, if yeah. I read it enough, I'll get it, but it just takes so long for me when it comes I to think... reading. They said, like, well, they're doing the one shot where they're playing it, but they're also going to do, um, like, videos explaining how to play, and I was like, yes. Oh, great. Good. Their Handbook Helper series helped me when I DM'd for the first time, like, years and years ago. Hell they yeah. just explain shit easy, and I love that. Very good. My... I've wanted to try DM. <laughs> oh, I, I was forced to do it for the first time because... Ah! Our... Our DM at the time was a, uh, he was 35, we were freshly 18. Let's move on. So, <laughs> yeah. Kill him. Uh, <laughs> yeah, gross. Arrested. Jail. Yeah. So Jail. we were like, oh, well, we still want to do this. We don't want him to ruin it for us. And then they were like, Maddie, you just want to, and I was like, sure, I can learn how to DM. I watched two YouTube videos. <laughs> it was not good. It was not good. But. I bet it was great at the time. I bet y'all had a fun time. It was very fun. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I hope the ads were good. I, I apologize. We were just talking about- Get that money. I Get am gonna watch the Dagger Heart one shot. I hope I can maybe give it a go. That was the culmination of what was discussed. Yeah. Apologies. Um, yeah, I'm keen. I love trying out new TTRPGs and stuff like that. It's very fun. My entire room and desk is a war zone at the moment because I oh, okay. uh, built a new wardrobe because I used to have like a clothing rack and it broke. So we have the no. new IKEA wardrobe and I made one of my friends build it for me because I don't know if it's the ADHD. I can't build stuff like Lego, anything like that, like physically. <laughs> I'm... I'm genuinely terrible at it. I get really stressed and I cry. And I had to build this oh. chair myself. Very simple. In retrospect, I cried like three times building it. No, Mets, hi! But one of my friends, he's like, oh. I'm male and autistic. This is Lego. And then he came over and built it for me. Except oh. we're, we're in a girl house, so we don't have any tools. Our tools is this... Uh, little thing of uh, screwdrivers that we got from like Daiso um that's it then we use butter knives for everything else so he was like why don't you guys have a drill and we're like we're at a girl house but do you know what I do have a drill. seven different yellow markers what shade do you want like get it together <laughs> so he did half of it and is doing the rest later but my floor is covered in cardboard there's cardboard out there and yeah what, is a girl house I, like girl math but with real estate? Kind of. It was a thing that my friends and I came up with where a boy house versus a girl house is the predominant gender present in the house and then the amount of supplies that you have due to this. 
So in a girl house, we don't have any tools, but we have copious amounts of stationery. And in a boy house, they will have tools, but they won't have a glue stick. And you're like, <laughs> I'm like, do you have scissors and a glue stick? And they're like, no. And I'm like, what the fuck do you mean? I was like, do you have scissors? And they're like, maybe I'd have to go look. <laughs> and I was like, I'm how do you here. cut so things off? The and they're like, <laughs> uh, we just kind of use our teeth. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh, this is hilarious. Concerning. So that's go house, boy house. <laughs> Mainly because <laughs> me and my roommates are all women and we live together. <gasps> and then my one of my friends lives in a share house with all men and we just compare and contrast. They're white walls that have no art on them and they have more oh storage God. than we do and we're like, you don't even use it. <laughs> even know the blessings you have <laughs> upon you <laughs> exactly i guess i was just on a poor house because i didn't have any of those fair enough but listen you know how to make it work we might not have we work. don't have tools because we're incredibly self-sufficient you need that screw undone i use a butter knife in my hands mm -hmm. I'll, I'll do it you watch me I'll... <laughs> My friend yells at me because I'm using butter knives and I go, <laughs> Oh my god. As long as you don't hurt yourself, you're good. <laughs> I'm doing just fine. I've been doing just Exactly. Oof. That's a handy, so I, I know my way around tools. <laughs> I, got, I got heat guns, I got drills, I got yeah. dremel. Exactly. Got you got the envy power of all. <laughs> Both? Both is good. <laughs> both? Both. Both. Honestly, there's a period in my early 20s where I only came home to sleep real. Real? You've you've <laughs> lived the realest part of your 20s, which is uh, look, being able to look back on your 20s and go, how was I alive and breathing? So I decorating miss... seemed pointless. <laughs> but also, it's less of decorating to make myself feel happy and more so that I uh, visually enjoy the process of decorating. Same. Like Before I moved out, I was the little kid in Ikea picking out everything that I would buy for the house I would eventually live in. <laughs> I, I'm in Valid. The Sims. Like, no, beautiful, perfect. Exactly. I'm so thankful that my partner doesn't care about interior decorating because that means I can go nuts and then they'll just be like, yep, whatever you want, sweetie. <laughs> and you're like, yes. And even if you didn't think that, the results would be the same. I probably would be Did the same, but I have a doggo who's my best friend. Doggo is priority, period. you got to make Aww. sure it's great for the doggo. I enjoy that as well. Yeah. Just wait until I got married and now we can do it together. Oh, that's cute. I will say yeah. there is a whole thing where like people get married and they move out together and both of them have done the like moved to three share houses in a year thing so just moving out is hor a horrific chore now oh, <laughs> so i get cool. that especially I since i'm know. a maximalist with a small library worth of books that i own me moving is a hellscape i have so many things yeah, knickknacks i have so many i had to have a whole storage unit just for my crafting stuff and this next sentence is, for legal reasons, this is a joke. So nobody take this seriously, for legal reasons. I stole so much shit from Michael's craft store, like Period. 10 grand worth of stuff. So like, <laughs> I have so much shit, so many beads and crafting materials. Like I have so much crap. <laughs> for legal reasons, that was a joke. Yeah, but, that was a joke. Oh my God, so much stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, not looking forward to moving in September. That's true. But also, like, I kind of like the idea that you kind of refresh your mindset and everything. Like, when I get, like, I first moved, I had my new desk and everything, and I was able to, like, reset my attitude to be like, this is the space where I work. And that really helped me finish uni, because I was yeah. kind of like, new space. This is the place where this happens, instead of, like... <laughs> Anyways, it was a lot easier for me to handle in that way. Um, I think that's why I'm going to get a second desk. Kind of just L-shape them together and be like, this mm. desk works for work. This desk is for crafting. 
Follow your glue and weird shit on this side of the desk. Follow your work stuff on this side of the desk. I think that's gonna help with the with the organizing the mind because right now I just have the one desk and all my crafting stuff and work stuff is all at the same place, so it all just gets cluttered and horrendous right now. And it's like ah. <laughs> I totally get that. Craving mm. quizzes for the next like three days, but pull and peel ones because the regular ones I don't like the texture. I only like the That's very real. specific kind. <laughs> That's real. That's the that's the neurodivergent. Just <laughs> <laughs> you're looking forward I'm to so a fresh start. My partner ordered, but then they gave us the regular Twizzlers. They didn't get the specific one. Oh no! I was so upset. <laughs> mm. Fresh start is always good. Absolutely. I'm the same when I'm gonna move up here. It's gonna feel like when I'm officially moved up here. Mm. Again, for legal reasons, for the Canadian government, I am not up here. I do not live here. I do mm -hmm. not know what you're talking about. <laughs> What's Canada? They What's didn't even Canada? know that New Brunswick was in Canada. They know nothing about Canada. <laughs> See, I, I don't know nothing about Canada. I don't know what I don't know what's going on. Don't worry about it. I'm not here. It's north, <laughs> I think. <laughs> yeah, it's in like the upper place, you know, kind of probably next to like I don't know Georgia or something. I don't know. Nice. <laughs> oh, I've Aww. got um the D and D session where I'm unveiling all of this prop shit tomorrow. <laughs> so today and tonight is just gonna be me grinding to be fair i'm doing pretty well i only have one uh, more double page spread and then one page to go and then i just have to okay. finish writing this uh dissertation and then print it out and make it look all pretty so i've done like a colossal like portion of the job where like good um but yeah it's this doing this series has been really fun because i think for a while I wasn't streaming enough, like, on my own channel. I was just, like, being on other people's accounts and then just doing Boulder's Girlies with um, Diana and Kiki, <laughs> which I love, but, like, I want to, like, establish the D&D &D aspect of what I do, especially yeah. since I've got a campaign. As you know, I've got a campaign running in the future. <laughs> Part of me is so sad that we couldn't commission you to do the art in the end. But oh, one day we're going to work together and it's going to be amazing. And it's so exciting. I mean, with this new, with this old character dead, I have a new character. You might see me in, <laughs> running into your DMs. Campaign running. Better to go catch it. Tom, if you don't get the fuck out of my chat. If you don't get the fuck out of my chat. <laughs> Temporary timeout. <laughs> I'm glad you only joined now. I was talking about campaign secrets before. And maybe a Ooh. thing that I'm showing tomorrow. So don't say anything. <laughs> What? A it's campaign? No nothing. way. It's nothing. Don't <laughs> worry about it. Um, a campaign? No way. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I'm bringing. Yeah. Yeah, we've been painting it this whole time and it's great. <laughs> yep. Here. I do have a random mini in front of me. It's my Sphinx, which oh. Tom fought. Now Kim. Oh, I love! It looks so cute! It's so detailed. I got one of those baby so hides. Obsessed. There she is. This was for a love the color. campaign. Oh, I loved her. She was so fun. I remember I got it and it was so delicate. I was like, I didn't want to paint it because I was like, I'm going to ruin this. Fort and beat. <laughs> Oorah. The best part was oh. they started asking the questions and whatever. And then they couldn't get the last one. Oh, wait, no, you did get the last one. But they were talking about like, we, should we answer the questions or should we go in and just kill it? Should we, should we just go in and kill it? And I was like, and they didn't. They answer the questions and then the Sphinx uh, oh. then flies up and uh, jump, jumps off of a cliff canonically in the myth. Uh, ah! Yep. She goes, Bet. you're smarter than me. I hate <laughs> Guess it I'll here. die. <laughs> <laughs> Guess I'll die. Absolutely. <laughs> I can't believe you've beaten my riddles and questions. Off to off Answer myself. my riddles three. <laughs> what? 
is your favorite palette. Stop sipping <laughs> gas in my chat, Mets. I'm gonna find you. <laughs> Just drinking straight gas. I hear it's good for the bone. <laughs> oh my god. Don't encourage them. Don't encourage them, I beg of you. I'm Listen, smacking I have to deal with Offbeat Outlaws chat. Like... <laughs> Listen, Kiki's chat started a meme about drinking gas to the point that there are now emotes and she has a sign oh in the back of her God. streams that says don't drink gas. And now they come into my oh. chat drinking gas. <laughs> I gotta make you an emote that's just says it's just the no sign on a gasoline can. <laughs> <laughs> gas is amazing though. Tom, get out. So nutrient rich. Mm. More, I would say element rich uh <laughs> as in chemicals that will kill you i'm heading to diana stream have a good one hell yeah we if when we if we finish up by the time she's still streaming we'll probably raid in she's an icon i'll probably hop uh in the next like 10 to 20 minutes just because fish stuff so probably join one absolutely uh, we can do that does anyone have any questions that they want us to ask? I think we- I don't think we've answered <laughs> one D&D question this whole time. We- I be, we have been talking about D&D, so I feel like it still counts. Yeah, we've still been chatting about it. Thomas, do you have a D&D yeah, question for us? Go on. Go on, moderator. <laughs> Every time I look at his username, I just get upset. <laughs> How do you not play a nerd loser? Alright. I know you're probably used to playing that, so I guess it's good to ask someone who hasn't played one. <laughs> Alright. Thomas, I'll ban you. I don't give a shit that you're a mod. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, wait. Listen, <laughs> Tom, I have a question for you. You said that your new character is going to be a pacifist. Um, I don't oh? think you can emotionally pull that off considering your last Pacifist. yeah his last characters were like a like tr like a trotskyist uh artificer who built a nuke ah! a Not warlock a who just wanted to kill everything and everyone and now he's like oh, i'm playing this soldier who's a pacifist and i was like i don't believe you maybe it's a bit it's a long-running bit i think it might be a bit <laughs> it's gotta be a bit <laughs> Gotta start somewhere. Absolutely. <laughs> I play my level 20 barbarian fighter, so I'm used to triple digit damage and being able to kill things in one move, so like, oh I, get, I get the violence. I understand it. Oh my god. He fights for peace. <laughs> I, ah! I will get peace and I don't care and I don't care how many men, women, and children I need to kill in order to get it. <laughs> Oh, I, okay, so he just doesn't know what a pacifist means. <laughs> yeah, I think that might be it. Yeah. He's literally just peacemaker. We live, we love, we love. Oh my god. Um, I don't know if you play Overwatch, but there's this one voice line that Zenyatta and Soldier76 have where Soldier's like, pretty much like, oh, well, I can't believe you're here, Mr. Pacifist. And he's like, who told you I was a pacifist? He's like, well, I assumed with how you talk. And it's like, well, then maybe assumptions are the what's foolish. <laughs> and I was like, what? He just said, I will fight you right now, bitch. <laughs> An actual pacifist in my vocab is just coward idiot. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Um, pacifist. You just lit that man on fire. Yeah, but period. he was mean to me, so it's fine. <laughs> but yeah, I do. I'm... I want to see if I can get a mini for my new character today. I, as a little treat for myself, as a little treat, I was like, I'm just going to make her stupidly attractive. I was like, I just want to make a hot <laughs> fucking character. My last character was a man. He's He was a furbog wizard who was Sorry. just an old man living his best <laughs> life. He wasn't living his best life. He was actually stressed most of the time. Um, oh. And then I play, I'm actually playing two furbogs at the moment. The other one is a like a dilf, so he's he's kind of hot. So like I did that Hell for me, yeah. but I haven't. And then my last female character that I played, she was like very sweet and kind of like cute and comfy and like librarian. But I was like, I want to play a butch ass lesbian, ah! strong, ripped, punk motherfucker. And I like 
found a couple of pieces of art to like kind of inspire her vibe and I was like <laughs> I sent it to the lesbian in our party and she was like don't do this to me and I was like <laughs> <laughs> don't do this, please. what other art was there huh <laughs> okay I will tell this story so I found this one piece of art on Pinterest but I was just like oh I love that vibe I really want to have a similar vibe she will be my inspo for the vibe and then I went okay it looks like it links directly to the artist Tumblr. Great, I'll see if they have any other art of this character. Because I, I want to... More, please. Went in. There was more art of this character. However, the one piece that I found was the only one that wasn't, like, full frontal randy pornography. What? Hardcore pornography. Yeah, and I was like, you know what? <laughs> I live for it, like, so, and I told Tom, and he was like, send me the link, and I did, and he was like, good. Source, source. send the source. Source, source. link, link, uh, check, link? please. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, Slay, I love this, I guess. Um, but yeah, very, she's a, going to be a Gloomstalker Ranger rogue. She doesn't have enough levels to have a rogue subclass yet, but she will be assassin. So very, like, in the shadows, assassin bounty hunter core, which, like, I live for. Listen, bet. Google, show me Not this guy's balls, balls please. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Absolutely. <laughs> Google, the internet is a wondrous balls. place. <laughs> Google, show me this guy's balls, please. We, in our, like, <laughs> old campaign together, there was, like, this, like, AI villain thing called Mentat. Um, and the session where they were introduced was called, Hey, Mentat, can you show me this guy's balls, please? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my I God, think I love it. My favorite one that we came up with, which Tom came up with, was... It was a very emotional session. So much happened. One of the main things that happened is that we had a chance to talk with one of the PCs that had previously died. And it was a Aww. really gorgeous conversation. A lot of us cried. And the session was called Better Call Soul. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> eh, eh. Oh, deep, I swear. <laughs> uh, I, our DM will be like, this one is called Retribution. And we'll be like, okay. And it will finish. And we're like, what stupid pun can we come up with? <laughs> How can we turn this into a funny right now? Absolutely. It must be done. Oh, well. Listen, my Wednesday campaign, nine times out of ten, we're sitting there suiting the shit and being ridiculous versus actually progressing the plot. <laughs> As you should. Are you doing the one with Ben Brainard and he's playing a wizard, or is that a different one? I'm not in the... Yeah, there's two. Uh, I get them confused. They're both on first <laughs> channel. I, um, I joined for the summer Tuesdays. games for one session because yeah. I was in Vietnam and then getting my boobs chopped off. It was very sad. <laughs> I was so sad I couldn't join in more. But I was there no, for a I singular mean... session and then I left. <laughs> no, valid. I wish Fef paid for the extra character because it would have been fun to draw yours. <laughs> Though I will say, I got f like two pieces of fan art of that character and then I felt really bad because oh, they yay! like betrayed the party at the end so. gasp oopsies i definitely didn't know that was gonna happen <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> but yeah that was gasp. really fun one day we will but yeah no i'm on the one on saturdays uh with uh offbeat finley quincy <gasps> i played with quincy for the first time the other day i uh, love them it's not just me being right i know love it quincy. was for one of Jason's PvP things. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Fish glub. Glub glub. And like Quincy was just trying to kill the other guy the whole time. And then I was in the center. <laughs> and then I just wizarded shit. And then halfway through everyone went, okay, listen. I know we've just been fighting each other. But Maddie is ahead of us by like a thousand points. We need, we need. <laughs> backtrack, <laughs> we need backtrack. And then they targeted me. And then I I came second. Fef scraped past yeah. me. 
But I, I still think it was I st rigged. I was the only <laughs> right. woman. I was the only woman playing, and you know when they targeted Sexism, me, clearly. misogyny. <laughs> I kept That's saying that. Inspired. I'd be like, you're hitting me? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, so you hate women? <laughs> <laughs> Every time, Fef looks so bewildered. <laughs> it was so funny. Oh my god. Too good. Uh, I got second place in my P2 Ivy 1. It's like, because I, I was a paladin with a wicked high, like, AC and shield. So I was like, mm. don't hit me. Leave me alone. So, like, I wasn't getting hit with almost any attacks. So Ivy was doing like moonbeam and area of effects stuff because that was like the only way to hit me. So she kept racking yeah. up the points that way, and I was like, "Damn it!" <laughs> we we did like a group like kind of like fight a pit style one, and yeah. Have you played Baldur's Gate three? I played it for all of like thirty minutes, but I've okay. seen uh, my partner play it. I've seen yeah. all my friends play it. Like, um, you might know of like this one fight where they're fighting against like a giant warforged almost in the Grim Forge. Maybe okay. yep. I'll describe it. Big like circular <laughs> thing. There's lava in it, and then in the middle there's this thing called like the hammer or whatever the fuck. Uh, and if you get, uh, you're meant to like try and get like coax the Grimforge robot to get under it and then you pull a lever to like smash it and it does ridiculous damage. So oh. I bided my time. And the thing is you don't know what spells to prepare before you go into it and what I was just very yeah. lucky that I prepared like very good spells <laughs> for this. <laughs> the spell that I ended up using I was going to use for something else but it was perfect for this. So what I did was waited till everyone used their shot, their shit was saving my sixth level and then uh, got everyone to make the wisdom saving throw and casted scatter and put oh. all of them under the hammer and then pulled it. <laughs> and that's what pulled me ahead really violently. And they were like, right. but originally I was going to use scatter to see if, if they all moved away from me to put them in an area and then like blast them with an AOE was my original plan. But then I was like, hammer time. Cause that does like 120 <laughs> damage immediately i think feff succeeded but i got a couple of them under there it was very fun damn it feff misogyny <laughs> Misog he didn't fail the sa he succeeded on the saving throw i see how it is i see how you treat you us <laughs> damn i see what you're doing yeah the username's horrific i'm sorry matt so you have to see that well lex t tell us <laughs> Tell us about what you have going on. Tell tell the people where they can find you. I'll grab your links and put them uh, in the chat. I'll do, I'll do my streamer uh, do it. that I do on like all the streams. <laughs> hello, hello. I am Smallbird Lex. You can find me at Smallbird Lex and Smallbird Art. I do art, TTRPG, and you want to see my art? Wow, you're looking at it right now. <laughs> <laughs> if you like my style, anything I do, please commission me. I love to draw stuff. I love watching characters to life. It's very fun. Uh, I'm gonna be on Fish Finley in like about half an hour. Uh, it's fun. Uh, anything I do is on Saturdays. I'm on Surf Effer's channel with my level 20 barb fighter. We love her to fit. Furbolg, uh, she's perfect in every way, and no one otherwise. Uh, I Wednesday, fucking love Furbolgs. Oh my god, me too. I love Furbolgs. Like, I've played like three different Furbolgs out of like Same. all the characters I've played, and that's still the most of like. Hey, listen. Race type of those race. racial ASI boosts go so hey, fucking hard. Also, listen. Hidden Step. <laughs> hidden Step is so cool. I've only used it like twice, but it's so fun. It's so, especially if you if you're playing a class that doesn't use that bonus action too much. I imagine you yeah. would though as a melee fighter, but it's when I'm playing a wizard, it's so good. Lexus V2 is so hard. <laughs> Funny enough, I'm actually working on another one, uh, which is less goblin-like and more succubus-like, so we'll see how that goes. You're, it's like, it's uh, Lex after dark. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Like, you think the boobs are big on this one? Wait till my VTuber's done. <laughs> Slay. Kiki's saying the but things yeah. we're all thinking. Real. Hi, Kiki, darling. <laughs> we're wrapping up. I'm so sorry. But I'm probably going to get everyone to rate it to Diana, so we'll see you there. Hell yeah. Sorry, you were saying. Oh no, that's it. I do the thing. Tire me. Yes, I will be. I'll be <laughs> in your DM soon. Don't you worry. <laughs> um, oh yeah. 
Hi everyone, <laughs> I'm Maddie. You're on my channel, Madeline. Um, I've got my uh, Percy Jackson Greek mythology campaign happening soon-ish. It's gonna be in early April. Me and the boys are currently running our pre one shots for it. We are all so so very excited. Be sure to follow me on here and TikTok for updates. We'll be having a trailer come out hopefully soon. Um, we are stupidly stupidly excited for this otherwise i'm going to be doing these little things which i've officially named D and D and Q and a <laughs> um, which is a little just chatting stream i'll do with my creator friends on uh in america monday and tuesday nights if you're living where i live it's tuesday and wednesday mornings um otherwise tomorrow i will be on the stream uh, doing uh, Boulder's Girlies with my dear friends Kiki Do Stuff and Diana of the Rose, <laughs> where we will be doing our barbified run of Boulder's Gate 3. We are yeah. in Act 3. We did it. I, I think we might be the only group of like streamers playing Boulder's Gate 3 together that have actually made it to Act 3 without disbanding. Yeah. I'm so proud of us. Um, last, uh, be sure to check out the VOD if you want to. Last session, we I think we all had uh, sex with someone at least once. Diana finally yeah. got to screw house and we did love the save so she could try the bear and him because we are women oh. and we care about each other. Um, <laughs> it's been a long road but we made it, period. Uh, Together we made it. We did. Uh, we will see you next time. Thank you so much for hanging out. Yeah. Uh, be sure so to fun. follow Lex. The link is pinned. Bye 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 Do bye. It. bye. <laughs>